this is uh, going to be a very brief um, uh, review uh, of the activity within AFLM during 2021, um, which was the uh, the second uh, full year in in the community. Uh, as Neil pointed out, uh, the secretariat uh, has not changed during uh, 2021. Um, the members uh, were the same, and the chairs were the, the two chairs were the same, namely uh, Tom uh, from Stanford and me from the National Library of Norway. But happily, from uh, today, Emmanuel from BNF and Neil from the, uh, the British Library has taken over. Uh, for those who does not know, the Secretariat is supposed to sort of manage the, the community, help uh, the community um, work as, as good as it uh, can. And it's mainly done through month, monthly uh, meetings. Uh, Further on, we have uh, the working groups and the chapters. Um, we have now five uh, working groups and uh, one chapter. Uh, I will not go into these since they are going to be uh, reported on. Uh, and there are links to reports from the various uh, working groups in, um, uh, in the document for today. Um, uh, during last year, we also established uh, what we call the uh, uh, the council uh, in Air Fulham. And the council is supposed to uh, facilitate, help uh, the community to um, uh, to achieve uh, it, its goals. Uh, it's meant to be uh, the real experts from the community um, helping to facilitate activities in various kinds. Um, there is also uh, a, a charter for the council uh, in uh, community drive. Uh, so if you want to read it, do it there. And I'll, <clears throat> I'll link to that document uh, from uh, today's document. Uh, this council uh, is uh, the members of this council is uh, they are in, invited by the secretariat and uh, I think they count approximately 10, 10 members today. Uh, if you look at the activity uh, and the numbers for 2021 and 2020 in parentheses, uh, we can see from <clears throat> the various activities that we have uh, that there is uh, um, some growth in, in activity. Uh, both in the uh, Google group uh, on Slack and also in the community calls. We have uh, altogether uh, a good growth in, in activity. Uh, in addition to these uh, uh, more formal channels that we have, uh, the uh, Google group, uh, Slack and community calls, we participate with uh, uh, presentations in the various forums, and uh, we also disseminate uh, information through the, the Google Drive, uh, which is open to, uh, to all. Um, the more shameful uh, side of our uh, outreach is the website. We are now, we have the ambition now to refresh it, uh, update it, and, and make it better. And in fact, from yesterday, I think the registry is now, uh, it has got a relatively um, a new face also with the option of, <laughs> of uh, doing uh, self-service. And the registry is now split into parts, one for um, activity like things, and the other for um, uh, data sets and models. We also have other kinds of activities like uh, the uh, training and workshops that we have had uh, first in March, April, and then November, December. Uh, very fruitful uh, and very, uh, we had uh, lots of participants, and I think they, uh, they were much appreciated. <clears throat> and uh, lastly, we had the uh, Fantastic Futures uh, conference, the third one. Um, this time in Paris at BNF, 
and uh, I think somebody like um, perhaps Emmanuel will dive a little di uh, deeper into uh, that uh, conference uh, later during this call. So that was uh, more or less it, Daniel. Thanks, uh, Sam. Uh, any comments or questions? Okay, we can come back to uh, that later. Um, on to updates from the working groups. Uh, so if the chairs or a member of uh, each of the working groups would like to uh, introduce uh, their, their group and summarize activities uh, for last year, uh, that would be great. Is there someone from the challenge working group available? I'm from the uh, challenge working group. I don't have anything to add to the uh, summary document. Your audio is a bit uh, uneven. Uh, oh, yes. Very sorry. Um, I don't have anything to add to the, um, the summary document. OK, thank you. So the, uh, the document is linked there uh, for people to have a look at. Uh, Metadata working group. Um, so I'm Jeremy Nelson. I'm one of the co-chairs. Um, there's not a lot beyond our uh, the summary document. Uh, we had a number of really good presentations that were given to the, the metadata working group. Uh, and uh, we also, uh, for this year in particular, uh, we sent out a survey last week on uh, getting some feedback from, from our communities about ways metadata uh, can be used or in conjunction with machine learning. Uh, we also, this past year, uh, have, a, have a new co-chair after Tim Thompson's from Yale's great work, uh, Eric Rose from the University of Colorado. So we're happy to have him on board. And we just wanna encourage everybody, if, if you have interest uh, on the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday of every month, we have our, our monthly meeting. That's great. Thanks very much. And uh, onto the registry working group. Yeah, I suppose that's me again. Um, so as I uh, mentioned, uh, there has been some development. We have uh, uh, had exactly zero uh, meetings, uh, but I would like just to uh, point you to uh, this one, uh, which is the uh, registry uh, in, uh, in our website in airflan.org. Uh, uh, it is now split, as I said, into in three parts. And we now have uh, uh, this option also to, to add uh, um, the things that we think um, belong to this registry or these registries. Uh, there are now two registries, one for, one for project activities and organizing, the, uh, the second one for data set and models. So uh, uh, please add your uh, knowledge there. Thanks. And let's go on one second. Uh, teaching learning working group. Okay, hi, uh, I'm Claudia Engel and I'm uh, co-chair of this with Mike Trisner. Um, I, we have also linked to our uh, summary document. I can briefly uh, perhaps go over this. Uh, we, uh, one of the main things we did in last spring is uh, what Sven Arno already mentioned. We were heavily involved in the organization of the first set of, um, uh, of workshops in March in collaboration with uh, uh, BNF and Lieber. Um, we uh, ourselves, our working group people also uh, taught uh, a workshop in this context. Um, and then the second major effort that we was uh, we did was authoring a, a training resources review, which we have reported on in this community call in um, October. Daniel 
Menstrine gave a summary um, that's uh, linked from the document, it's online, um, and we're currently sort of reviewing it and drafting it and seeing what next steps are. We also have a blog post about this uh, review. Um, we have monthly meetings, they are all, we have an agenda, so um, uh, noting uh, meeting notes uh, where you can see uh, what, we did, what we did over the year. Uh, we had a few guest speakers. We had Nora McGregor from the British Library. Uh, we had last, uh, the last session, we had uh, Daryl Hoffman from um, San Jose State uh, talking about Interpowers Trust AI. Uh, that also has a segment about curriculum uh, development. Uh, so we're hoping to collaborate with those folks um, in the future. Um, that brings me to the next steps. Uh, so this is revising the training sources review. Uh, we also continue inviting guest speakers. We find this quite um, interesting and uh, also interesting for the broader community. Um, we also, uh, uh, wanted to see if we can uh, reach out to the data curation group, group to um, think about uh, developing training sets or um, sort of developing training about how to develop training sets. Um, and uh, then uh, perhaps also uh, we are sort of thinking about, uh, similar to what Jeremy said, a survey or at least uh, gathering some information from um, AI for Lamb community members about how they actually currently um, address <laughs> Uh, their AI training needs um, uh, at their various institutions, just to gather some information of what we have within this group. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Mike, I don't know if you have to add anything for others who are here. That's great. Thanks, Claudia. And if people want to uh, come to the meetings, when when are they normally held? Uh, they're currently uh, uh, favor Europe and the US. So uh, we meet uh, the uh, second Mondays. Uh, and that's, uh, I only know the Pacific time, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. That's later, like 18, uh, 6 p.m. In, in Europe or 5 p.m. in Europe, I forget. Um, but we have a channel and all the documents you know, um, on the reading channel. So the, the times are posted there. I also post the meet, upcoming meetings in our Slack channel. Great, thank you. Uh, the the next uh, uh, group is the Australian and New Zealand chapter, and uh, Ingrid Mason uh, has sent her apologies. Um, but there is information about uh, the the activities of the chapter uh, in her slides. They're they're a very active group and uh, it's one of the challenges of international uh, collaboration with the time zone differences. So um, that's the rationale for having the chapter. Um, and it's also to maximize the benefits of uh, local collaboration and participation. Uh, so do please have a look at uh, the information uh, in the slides and I'm sure Ingrid would be happy to answer any questions you may have uh, via Slack. Okay, on to the, the reading group. So although not a formal working group in AI for LAM, um, I asked uh, Marianne to uh, give an update because it looks like you, you've had quite a, a busy year. We have, our group started at Stanford in March, 2020 <coughs> as, uh, as the pandemic started um, as a way of uh, keeping connected with community. And we um, we did the Elements of AI course at the University of Helsinki. And um, we continued the discussion by converting to a reading group in AI for LAM, starting with Melanie Mitchell's popular book. And um, the racial issues that were, we were becoming more aware of at that time led us to retext like algorithms of oppression. In 2021, we read 11 books, one long form article on smart cities and completed the building AI course by the University of Helsinki, which is the next course they have. And the books we selected in 2021 increasingly featured topics about the data that feeds AI, along with issues of privacy, racism, and self-determination. We are unofficial, as you noted, unofficial, self-organized, ad hoc. Um, so feel free to join us on the Slack channel at hashtag reading dash group. Um, and in the about uh, for the channel, there are links to our Zoom meeting 
um, and a spreadsheet of books that we have read or are thinking of reading. And uh, right now we are meeting at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time every other Friday. And we are currently reading, no, not that book. Uh, no, not that book, <laughs> surrounded by books. Um, it, it looks like you're, you're about to put it out of the forest. <laughs> That's true. Uh, it, the, the, the book we're reading right now is called um, Numbered Lives, um, a feminist media history of quantification. So we've read the first half and we're reading the second half um, for the meeting that is in a week and a half. That's great. Thank, thanks very much. Okay, so that is uh, the updates from working groups and chapters. Uh, over to you, Emmanuel, for Fantastic Futures. Thank you. Thank you, Nia. So, um, yes, I'm going to, to share my screen. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so um, yes, we wanted to, to give you a, a flavor uh, of the, the conference that happened in December. And in order to do so, um, I invited a few colleagues so that you can uh, also see, see the faces of the persons who were uh, a little more behind the scenes uh, for this event. So um, just a quick note that you can, uh, check the, the website conference where you will find we're progressively adding uh, the presentations um, that were uh, given by, by the presenters and also uh, the recordings um, but um, yeah bef before we we have the, this is just a summary of what we're going to say um, before we enter into details I just I just wanted to mention how happy we were to actually have a physical conference uh, in Paris, although you know the situation was not uh, that ideal, and of course um, we could have uh, had better circumstances. Obviously, I know many people didn't have a chance to to travel uh, to France or to Paris. Uh, even some of the speakers uh, had to to cancel at the last minute. Uh, or even to come, they they proposed some presentations and, and they couldn't uh, come uh, to participate. So it was a shame um, that it was not uh, as easy as we wanted for everybody to to attend the conference. But we did have a nice event with scattering, and uh, we have this photo of uh, the very nice goûter that we had on the on the second conference day. So um, a little more about uh, what happened, the structure mm. of, the, of the event, which was quite extensive. So the week before, from November 29 to December 7, we had uh, online, online workshops, uh, several of them. Uh, some of them were uh, replay from uh, the, the ones in April that Claudia mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, others were totally new. Uh, we, we even had one that was uh, given twice in order to accommodate different time zones. And one of them was um, a joint webinar uh, with IFLA because uh, some colleagues uh, from, from IFLA reached out um, because they wanted to create um, artificial intelligence uh, special interest groups, so for libraries. So if any of you is interested by, by this initiative, uh, it was more or less the the starting uh, block of this uh, of this new group, IFLA group. So depending on the type of workshop, some of them had a few people, other, uh, I think the IFLA one had more than 60. So it was, uh, it was a, a good success. Then we had two days uh, that were on site only. Uh, the first day was uh, in University Paris-Saclay, who was our partner in organizing the, the event. Uh, and the second day uh, was at, at the BNF. And we really wanted to have these two days uh, as on-site events 
uh, and even on site only, which was a, a very big decision and especially a difficult decision to keep until the end, because in the last weeks before the event, we were seeing the, the crisis, the, the sanitary crisis becoming worse and worse. And, and we were just wondering if it was the, the right way to go. But um, we had decided for for physical event and we wanted to 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 go to, to the end of this uh, of this idea. So um, both events, uh, bo both days uh, uh, had a little uh, around 150 people uh, attendance, uh, which is which is nice considering the, the situation. But especially what was really uh, nice that the, the flavor of of workshops. So the people who did make it to, to the event were really. Uh, practitioners, people who are really uh, invested in, in the topic of applying AI to digital collections, uh, and uh, and it was really great. We had two great discussions. So I leave it to my colleagues to explain a little more about that. Um, of course, uh, some of the presentation didn't take place, and uh, so the plan is to. Um, is to try to organize them online, also using these community calls that we are having uh, at the moment. Uh, on December 9, we had a very nice keynote from uh, Marion Carré, which has been recorded and you will be able to see it on the website uh, very soon. And then uh, on December 10, it was the main conference, which had uh, full streaming on YouTube and it's still available there if you can't wait to see it but uh, we are editing the recordings with a separate uh, recording for each uh, conference and they will be available very soon. So um, maybe it's, it will be better if you want to uh, attend virtually uh, this event. We had about uh, 120 people uh, attending either on site in the conference room or online uh, on that day. So it was uh, quite good as well, considering uh, the circumstances. And with this, uh, I'm going to, to end over to, uh, to my colleagues who are there to, to present the different parts of the event. And first, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Céline Leclerc. Uh, Céline is a very close colleague. We're working together uh, every day uh, at the BNF. And she's the person, thanks to whom you will have a great website with uh, recordings and everything. Uh, in order to um, to relieve the, the conference, uh, she's behind the scenes of the of the website. She was also um, presenting uh, a poster during the conference uh, on the roadmap for artificial intelligence at the BNF, which is a work that we've been doing together for several months now. Céline, okay. thank you, Emmanuel. I, I will talk about the, the day at Sackley. And uh, first of all, I would say that it's, it's um, a, a relevant metaphoric place to launch such a conference because um, as, as, as you may have seen, um, many buildings are, are on this uh, campus are completed, but uh, this campus is also still under construction. And it reminded me uh, of the global landscape of AI in our institutions. Uh, let me explain. It is a place with very large, um, very high potential and its scale is international and it also requires permanent invention and so on. So I think it was a good place to, to, to be. And um, what I also appreciated is the rhythm of the day. Uh, as you can read on, on, on your screen, uh, it was a really comfortable and appropriate pace. Uh, we had time to understand each uh, presentation and to ask questions and to explore the subjects and issues and so on. And on, on the next slide, you can see the, the program of the day. You, you can see um, we had five presentations. I, I won't describe each of them, but you can see that um, each presentation uh, last, lasted about uh, one hour, so it's quite long and I, I really imp uh, enjoyed it. Um, the, the third point is that um, what I noticed is uh, that um, uh, AI projects was uh, related or uh, to to whole services, so they, they were included in in whole services. For, um, um, for example, um, 
we had a project dealing with chatbots. Um, you, maybe you can see it on the next slide. Um, it called Litterbot, and uh, Litterbot will be a part of an exhibition um, related with Molière, you know, uh, sorry, dedicated to Molière. Uh, Molière is a famous playwright, and uh, that will be an exhibition. And this chatbot is, um, ha has been uh, designed to, to, to come with uh, the exhibition. So you, you can't uh, imagine that AI projects are uh, quite... Um, isolated or uh, work on, on their own. They are really closely linked to, to other projects and services. Um, the, uh, another point that interested me is that um, 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 it, it was a good opportunity to explore intelligence and not only technologies and machines. And several presentations were uh, uh, well, dealt with uh, in uh, language. Uh, you, you had um, many questions about what language is, uh, what is oral language made of, and so on. And we could um, question uh, these subjects and, and share our interrogations with artists. Uh, and that was really interesting. Uh, for example, um, Nicolas Taffin, who is a designer, explained uh, to us that he, he imagined with other colleagues and in particular with researchers, uh, 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 what he called a crea arton. And he, he, he aimed at uh, making people uh, work together and especially making artists and scientists work together. So it was really interesting. And last point is, uh, uh, that um, some, uh, uh, some researchers explained to us um, that um, they had a, what I call a meta approach. For example, um, Jeanne Vézien, who, who um, presented the last project of the day, um, uh, works with uh, artificial intelligence and especially with, but mainly with virtual reality, in fact. And she, she has chosen the, the Sackley Future Learning Center as a field for her research. Uh, her research deals with architectures, art, architecture projects. And so she and her students work with librarians to improve the future library. But at the same time, they analyze how librarians react when using virtual reality. So uh, it was a, a, a double uh, approach, uh, and I found it very interesting. And what I, uh, um, well, to conclude, uh, what I wanted to say uh, is that um, AI can involve many people, and this, the projects uh, showed us uh, how, how it can involve many people. For example, uh, a chatbot for um, the users of an academic library involved uh, 32 men and women. And it was also a way to take care of the colleagues' uh, needs regarding AI, um, to, to see the subject they wanted to, to, to to understand more, more and uh, the, the training sessions they need and so on. Well, thank you very much, Celine. So um, then we are jumping to the next day, uh, the 9th of December, which was at the BNF uh, in the Belvedere, which is a, a nice place with a beautiful view over Paris. Um, and I would like to uh, introduce uh, Jean-Philippe Moreau, if you don't know him already, because he's very active in the, in the AI for Glam, for Glam uh, community. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity. So Jean-Philippe is working as an expert for Gallica, our, our uh, digital library uh, at the BNF. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank him for prompting me after he attended the first Fantastic Future Conference in 2018. Uh, to start working on, on AI, which was the beginning of uh, the great adventure where we are in together now. Jean-Philippe, it's for you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Yeah, three years ago. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just a, a brief overview of what we have done during the, this first day at the BNF. Um, I, I had the chance to monitor the, the English track. And as Emmanuel said, we started with a very inspiring mm -hmm. um, keynote from Marion Carré. Um, she's a, a pioneer in France on the 
chatbot for Glam. I came uh, back from Giant. He was downstairs. He must have heard the garage door open. And he oh, followed yeah. me back up here. Beth, your microphone Beth. is open. If you could just. Uh, oh, sorry. Right, please. Thank you. Yeah, so Mario is a pioneer in France on, on the chatbot um, for glam sector. And she exposed to us a um, couple of examples from um, chatbot in art um, to a very uh, user friendly uh, or user services oriented uh, chatbot. Um, then we follow up with a free station uh, from um, landscape of AI, I would say, to a um, large AI, AI project. And the last section, uh, session was dedicated to uh, handwritten text recognition. Um, and as Emmanuel said, this uh, first day was uh, at the same time a little bit disappointing because we we faced we had faced a, a lot of last minute cancellation, but at the same, at the same time it, it took like more uh, a workshop than a, than a conference. So we have plenty of time for uh, sharing and, and discussion. Um, Emmanuel. Thank you. Uh, so first, um, first session, um, it was mainly one presentation, uh, a twofold presentation from uh, BNF and European Art teams, uh, fully dedicated to um, data issue uh, when you have to, uh, to build up um, models, uh, user service oriented um, model data set or ground truth on, uh, with an image analysis perspective. So we, we talk a lot about uh, all the challenges we, we are facing every day uh, regarding evolution of the quality of this, uh, this kind of models uh, may uh, produce, um, how to share um, eventually, or how to share our data on our models. And we also had a, a very long QA uh, discussion session on how to move from area uh, research and development or proof of concept uh, to a production. Some of these resources, uh, as Emmanuel said, uh, will be online. Some of them are already available. Uh, and uh, under this uh, URL, we will be able to find uh, a quite interesting uh, survey we perform uh, live around data set uh, ground truth creation and, and training. And, a survey uh, around the audience of, of the conference. Um, the next session on how to implement at large scale um, AI uh, driven services. Uh, and at the same time, when we, we want, and I'm pretty sure you want to keep in mind uh, real life user services uh, in mind. Uh, so two um, very interesting um, project from our colleagues from the National Library of Norway. First one is dealing with um, uh, covers and, and pictures, and it's, uh, it's based on, simulatory, on a simulatory search uh, engine. Second one uh, from the same um, Brian colleagues uh, from Norway, and they exposed to us how to build a very large uh, corpus um, with the uh, objective of um, building a, a BERT model language. And the last project was from uh, Luxembourg and Switzerland. Um, it's um, it's uh, at the same time a pipeline um, dealing with historical newspapers, digitization, and um, very interesting um, portfolio, uh, portal um mainly uh, aiming at uh, digital humanities but uh, not only this uh, this user this users so uh, challenging and insight from this uh, free project but again uh, how to deal with very large collection and how to apply AI at scale uh, in real life uh, services and finally the, the last session um, on unwritten text recognition um, again, uh, two, uh, two very interesting and, and very inspiring projects. One is um, research, uh, is research oriented and, and research driven, uh, the Paris Bible. Uh, they had to um, face um, multiple issues from data gathering around um, uh, institutions all over the world. And 
how to integrate in, in, in their research um, an HDR tool you may already know, uh, Transcribus. Same tool in a different context uh, from our colleague from National Library, one of the two national libraries in, in, in Hungary. Um, again, how to integrate uh, Transcribus in a digitization workflow. And for this project, they were aiming at um, transcription of a large correspondence uh, archives. Uh, a lot of discussion and, and, and question around this, these two projects and then, uh, at the end of the day around um, particularly the importance of Tupolev uh, can be a blessing for, uh, for a research team when we are addressing a Tupolev compliant uh, institution and at the same time it can be a barrier for, for them. Um, and again, a lot of challenges uh, regarding uh, ground truth uh, creation, how to design, to correctly design models. Um, and at the same time, uh, HTR, uh, and it's, it's a very interesting conclusion, HTR, I would say, is now a um, very generic and very common tool in, um, in our toolboxes. And that's it for me, Emmanuel. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Philippe. So um, now I would like to introduce uh, two colleagues from the um, University of Paris-Saclay. So you understand that even besides hey, the off-site uh, event, okay, ha, ha, ha. Okay, we ha. had the um, we had uh, a lot of help. Uh, they were really uh, involved and uh, committed to uh, to organize uh, this uh, event with us. So it was great to to have them on board. So uh, first, uh, Sylvia uh, Silini, uh, Sylvia will uh, report on the French track. Uh, so on, on that day, the 9th of December, we had uh, two separate uh, groups uh, and one of them was a French speaking group. And uh, I would just wanted to mention that Sylvia uh, joined uh, the University of paris Saclay Libraries. She's in charge of digital projects and she joined while we were working. Sorry about the cat. While we were uh, working um, on, on selecting uh, the, the contributions for the conference, so it was, it was great to, to have her uh, join the, the effort during the, um, the conference. Sylvia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Manuel. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, as Emanuela was saying, uh, the 9th of December, uh, there was the English track alongside the French track. Uh, concerning this track, uh, just to give you an overview of, uh, of the track, the morning uh, started with an, an introduction session, followed by an audiovisual document session, while the afternoon was dedicated to a session concerning textual documents and uh, um, a discussion regarding the creation of a French speaking chapter in uh, A for LAM. Um, the introduction, we Perfect. The introduction was dedicated to the workshop uh, Digital Humanities uh, Meet Libraries and Archive Centers. Um, the workshop consisted of uh, three talks, uh, one concerning uh, the construction of a digital uh, archives regarding um, Paris art market, another one describing the Upoko project, which aimed to generate sonnets uh, by combining verses from the 19th century, and a third one presenting a project which tried to trace the change of words meaning in a UK based web archives. Uh, all the talks stress out the fact that researchers are not only consumers of data, but can also produce tools that have a value for librarians and archivists. This introduction, introduction was followed by the Institut National de l'Audiovisuel uh, project. Um, pr their presentation um, was around uh, automatic segmentation of uh, uh, news broadcast. Um, the speaker underli underlined how challenging it was to identify the different structure uh, of uh, news broadcasting uh, be because in particular they change over time. 
And uh, um, he also um, added that uh, this task was a precondition before analyze uh, the, um, the content of uh, new broadcasting. After lunch, um, we can go ahead uh, on the next slide. Okay, perfect. After lunch, um, a round table concerning, um, it took place a round table concerning the challenges um, regarding different test processes, process, processing technique, uh, in particular, um, HDR. Um, this fruitful discussion showed the presence of a very dynamic uh, French speaking community, particularly in the framework of local and national archives. Uh, before closing the day, um, it, took place, it took place a discussion uh, concerning the possibility of creating a French speaking chapter in A for LAM. Um, why this uh, idea in order to overcome the language barrier preventing A from spreading? How we think it might be possible by sharing information around the French project and their partners? And uh, about the outcome of this uh, discussion, um, uh, it, uh, it gave us the possibility to create a list of interested actors uh, with whom carry on the discussion in uh, 2022. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Silvia. So there is a lot of suspense to see if we're going to be uh, to create a French uh, chapter and have a second chapter in, in AI Poland. So finally, uh, I will uh, hand over to uh, Cédric. Uh, Cédric Mercier, who is, who is a project manager uh, at the University of Paris Saclay Libraries and has also participated in uh, all the steps of uh, organizing uh, this uh, conference together. Cédric, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um... Well, to begin, I, I would like to quote Laurence Angel, the president of the National Library of France. Uh, during the conference, she said, we must not leave the, the, AI, the AI field. So I think uh, it was, if it was still needed, this, uh, this day of main conference and the whole uh, three days of conference really shown us that uh, the field of uh, AI is not left by librarian, archivists, or curators. So the program of uh, this day of main conference was very rich. Oh, uh, I just want to make sure you are open because uh, I cannot and, use online order. Uh, can you just uh, in, okay, in uh, chain? Can you order through phone or I, I need? No? OK. Thank you. Uh, so the program of the of the day of uh, the last day of the main conference was very rich, uh, and Emmanuel um, uh, remind us um, uh, at the beginning. Uh, but you can um, uh, listen again online every uh, fantastic talk we had uh, on this day. Uh, so at uh, at the opening of the day, we had uh, the general director of the BNF and the vice director of Paris Saclay University. Um, we are talking about how their institutions uh, face uh, AI issues in terms of organizations and uh, skills. And indeed, during the rest of the day, we learned a lot about new skills uh, needed for GLAMS and especially uh, librarians dealing with AI. Uh, first, we have to face some technical issues, um, technical issues from how to recognize uh, architectural and artistic uh, styles in a Europeana collection to, to another talk, which was uh, the, the piano late rounds. So I mean, uh, how to process thousands of uh, digitized player piano rolls to play music uh, with computer. And uh, during the morning, we had a broad overview uh, of projects dealing with uh, AI um, in GLAMS. Then after these technical issues, uh, we have to face legal and ethical issues. Uh, and about that point, you can, uh, you can see uh, again, uh, or you can listen again, the, the talk uh, from Yaniv Benamou uh, from University of Geneva. And uh, uh, finally, uh, 
Uh, that's how organizations that we need to transform to implement artificial intelligence uh, in uh, our daily workflows. And uh, this point was uh, one of the points we saw during the afternoon sessions. Uh, the afternoon session was dedicated to organizational and institutional issues. And AI skills uh, must be shared skills uh, by many, if not all, people in LAMPS, uh, because uh, AI is going to get in every field of knowledge. And because collections are now more and more digital, uh, just think about the Internet archives uh, from BNF or other places. Uh, LAMPs are now uh, dealing in, the, in their everyday uh, uh, in their everyday life with big data. And as the director of the National Library of Norway said in the last talk of the day, uh, in, uh, he said in five years, uh, in five years, AI tools uh, will be integrated, completely integrated in library system. Uh, so time to question the, the relevance of, um, of AI is in LAMS, uh, this time is now over. We need to move on and we need to invent uh, our own solutions. And uh, indeed, who except librarians, archivists and curators are able to know what is the good use and what is the wrong use of artificial intelligence in uh, library archives and museums. Uh, well, in this context, uh, AI is not only useful to develop new services for the public, uh, but is just essential for our institutions to carry out their historical missions of cultural heritage preservation for future. And uh, finally, uh, one of the, of the speakers, and I can't remember which one uh, said that, but he made a perfect summary of the last day of the conference, uh, when, uh, when he said, fantastic future is now a fantastic present. And uh, maybe, uh, who knows, it will be the name of the next conference. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cédric, and, uh, and all for reporting on uh, this uh, very uh, intense event. Uh, it was very difficult to, to stick to five minutes per person, so <laughs> we definitely appreciate uh, your efforts. And I hand over the, the floor uh, to uh, Neil for the wrap-up. That's great. Thanks, everyone, uh, for your updates. Any any comments or questions that anyone has for uh, the speakers? Okay. Um, so looking forward uh, to 2022, um, the Secretariat working with the Council uh, will try and develop uh, the Lightning Talk calendar. So the next uh, meeting on uh, February the 15th uh, will be the standard format with uh, lightning talks, as well as uh, the other standing agenda items. Um, if you do have any uh, suggestions or uh, topics for inclusion into future uh, uh, community calls, then please uh, contact the Secretariat at the email address shown at the uh, bottom of the meeting notes. And uh, we will also highlight some of the papers uh, that won't be able to uh, be shown at the uh, Fantastic Futures uh, conference uh, during the community calls. So I'd just like to thank everyone for your uh, time and attendance today. And hopefully we'll uh, see you either on the Slack channel or at the next uh, community uh, call. Thank you, everyone.